Hello and welcome. Uma Ganesh, the CEO of Global Talent Track, joins us. Uma, 90% of people believe that India should have a diversified workforce. How far are we from um, reality? If you look at the corporate space, definitely we are beginning to see a trend where more women are joining uh, the workforce. And particularly if you look at uh, services industry or for that matter IT industry, close to about 35% of the workforce actually uh, comprises of women. But there are many other sectors where we are uh, very, very, uh, we have a long distance to cover. If you look at the manufacturing sector or for that matter, if you look at the defense and if you look at uh, uh, the uh, sector which has got a lot of hard labor um, in the corporate world, you find that women are uh, very, very small in number. But if you were to contrast this with the rural space, um, there we find women in very large numbers actually participating in hard labor. So there is something there uh, which tells us that the corporate world, corporate India is still not ready, still not equipped to attract women in large numbers. So, uh, you know, uh, keeping that in mind then, would you say that it is harder for women uh, to take on leadership roles in corporate India as compared to men? See, we are beginning to see that women are entering into the corporate world in large numbers. But when it comes to leadership positions, obviously it means there has to be a lot more commitment, a lot more uh, perseverance and the ability to put up with a uh, lot of challenges, whether it is in the workspace area or at home and so on and so forth. And to some extent, it is also an account of the kind of policies and the work environment that the corporates are consciously creating. Definitely, there are many examples of organizations which have come forward to rethink the workplace and uh, make sure that it is more congenial, that policies are more attractive. Uh, but um, yes, I think it's a combination of the woman wanting to believe in herself and wanting to make a successful career, especially um, you know mid-career point onwards. And also partially it is on account of the determination of organizations to have more women in senior leadership positions. I think both on both fronts we need to do a lot more work. So would it be fair to say then that Indian corporates are now encouraging women to take on leadership roles? Absolutely. We have uh, many examples of organizations which are uh, considering um, to put in place policies like you know, starting with uh, simple things like uh, crash to flexi working to um, enabling them to rotate from one role to the other depending upon the challenges at uh, their personal end that they may need to overcome at a particular point of time in their careers. Um, we see we see lots of such initiatives coming forth from corporates, but th there's a lot more that can be done uh, to encourage women to stay there and to assume larger leadership roles. Uh, Uma, you know the thing is that there's a perception that the higher a woman rises, as far as ranks is concerned, the big, uh, the more difficult it is to break the glass ceiling. Uh, uh, would you agree with that? And how can women actually uh, sort of uh, break the glass ceiling in such cases? See, uh, breaking the glass ceiling is uh, something that we have seen successful women doing because they have been passionate about what they are doing and they have been focused on getting there right from the start of their career. It doesn't something happen, you know, just when you have spent 10 years. You got to plan, you got to be very systematic, you need to be able to uh, think through and work with your families, get the commitment of uh, your partner or the family um, to enable you to achieve these goals. And success should not be seen as just a success of uh, the child, or the success of, the, uh, of your partner. When the family starts looking at success as something which everybody can share and everybody has a role to contribute, that's how I think the woman has to start influencing and getting the commitment of everybody around her both at workplace as well as at family right from the start if that were to happen and with a bit of a, with a bit of a luck with the right kind of opportunities coming her way she's able to seize those opportunities i think women will be able to take on larger leadership roles in much larger numbers in the coming years uh, you know a recent randstad survey says that uh, 66% uh, employees feel that men are better suited uh, to lead a company. Uh, why would this kind of a perception exist? See, we have to accept the reality that uh, men have been in the corporate sector for much, much longer time than women have been. If we were to move forward 20 years, I think if the same study were to be conducted, we are going to see completely different statistics 
and a very, very different take. We are finding that uh, today the diversity programs which are being run, until about five years back, most of these programs used to be aimed at women, motivating them and getting them sensitized about how to accommodate themselves, how to uh, adapt themselves in, in the workplace. But today these diversity programs are also aimed at men. It is to get the men to appreciate how women can play an effective role and how to support women and make them successful. So I think with these kind of initiatives and a new thinking coming in place, in 20 years, India is going to be a very different place, I believe. Okay, you know, a CII survey also uh, says that about 56% of the top 200 companies by market capitalization uh, have less than 10% of their staff as women. How good or bad is that? Well, I mean, definitely we would like to see that uh, at least if 49% of the country, uh, they are women, uh, then in the workplace, somewhere between 30 to 40% is a minimum that we should be aiming towards. And um, all these companies today are beginning to say, well, in our boards, we need to have women. Politicians are saying we need to have 33% reservation. Um, and there are definitely certain roles which have been completely um, you can say more or less taken over by women. If you look at customer care centers, if you look at uh, uh, roles which are uh, predominantly in the services industries, uh, we are beginning to see absolutely women uh, running the show from top to bottom. So I think uh, even these companies which have lesser proportion of their workforce being women, as I said earlier, in 20 years' time, all these companies, they will uh, see a huge change. Okay, so do you think that, uh, uh, you know, quotas perhaps would work as a good lever to uh, get uh, more women into the workforce? I think um, quota is good, at least for some time. I don't, I don't believe that we need to have this quota forever. Given that women have been marginalized, given that women have had a late start, in terms of opportunities in the corporate sector. It would be great to uh, look at that absolutely, of course, on merit. But um, um, with, with, with this kind of an opportunity available out there, women who may not have looked at these opportunities or might have thought that they're not really suitable for these opportunities would come forward and take on uh, these um, slots that may be available. But more than just uh, providing with these quotas, what is really important is to figure out how we can work out career pathing for women right from the early stage of their career. And that's where we see huge dropouts at maybe five years into the job, then 10 years into the job, and 15 years into the job. So uh, how do we prevent that from happening? How do, we prov uh, how do we help create a proper ecosystem? and also possibly create better sensitization for the families. If we are able to do all of these together and in uh, tandem, we are going to see a very different uh, set of uh, different type of a corporate uh, environment facilitating women to stay there. Okay, what are the softer changes that perhaps India, uh, India as a society needs to make to empower its women? If you're talking about softer changes, I think that begins obviously from the home where uh, at the, at, at, at the very early age where uh, you see still um, stories being read out or you know examples being uh, shared with both boys and girls I think more than motivating women if you are able to sensitize and give the right messages to the boys in the family I think we would be making a huge contribution in terms of how the society can accept women in leadership roles um, in addition to that we also have to factor uh, the important aspect that we have had men working in, a, in an environment where they have only seen men for a very long time. So now when they have to accept women as their colleagues, I think there is a sensitization that is required to be done for men who have been around for a long time. And when I, way back when I began my career, there would be hardly one or two or maybe maximum five women in, an, in a factory with uh, 1,000 people. And typically, they would be playing a support role like secretaries or assistants and so on. But now, if you have had men who have grown with the organization for 20, 30 years, and they suddenly find women coming into the boardrooms, into uh, you know, the cabins to discuss either as customers or partners or colleagues, it requires a, a very different kind of a mental approach. So I think we have to accept that that is going to be a challenge for men and how do we slowly make that change happen, the transformation happen. 
um, without trying to you know suddenly uh, tell them okay you you got to take it or leave it we got to also consider the fact that they require support in terms of adapting to more women in the workplace okay so what are the three things that india must do uh, to demonstrate that it is making solid progress towards gender parity okay first and foremost i would like to start from where the girls are there today in the school we have a huge problem in terms of girl dropouts from the school if we are able to figure out a way by which we can prevent that and we are able to demonstrate that in terms of uh, the numbers that we can um, actually put out i think that will be a great starting point because if the girls are able to stay on in the schools they are able to finish their uh, schooling um then of course comes the uh, next step in terms of how do we encourage them to get into universities and there are many interesting and very useful policies that the government has put in place but if you just were to look at even the slums in mumbai or pune and these are we can say you know two examples of towns or cities where there is a huge awareness about education there are a lot of ngos which are consciously working towards uh, encouraging more girls and women to stay on in the education system but there is this big issue of safety so that is the next aspect i would like to address i i would like to see the government uh, and uh, other stakeholders in the society address which is how can we say that this city where there are so many women is absolutely safe and we don't uh, have instances which will force parents and which will force families to pull the children back from school or colleges or workplace so that is the second um, i would say um, you know indicator of uh, the country really doing something progressive towards encouraging more women to go on and take on responsibilities and the third of course is the dropout that we see when the woman is in the in the in the corporate sector already and she is having to pull back because of family pressures and it's okay to pull out of the uh, corporate system but if the woman is having to stay back at home to uh, compensate for uh, uh, the partner not being able to provide that support that is really harmful if the same women were to become entrepreneurs and they are able to do something more meaningful by being at home or by being able to manage their time differently that will be fantastic so to to summarize three clear uh, three areas where i think we need a clear and urgent action one is how do we make sure that girl children do not drop out of schools second is how do we ensure safety for women from young to old and the third of course is to ensure that those who are already in the workforce do not have to come back and stay at home and sacrifice their careers and they are able to do something meaningful so if you are able to do these three i know these are three huge asks and a lot of work needs to be done but that i think would be a dream india all right uma thank you so much for joining us thank you pleasure